Last time, I rounded off two tedious lessons of technical terminology and terror with the following rules. Strong root movement occurs when the root rises by a second, falls by a third, or rises by a fourth. So what, I hear you cry, why should I care? You should care, because strong root movement is a wonderful thing. First of all, it sounds good, which is a very good thing indeed. But it's also nice because it gives us an entirely new way to plan out chord progressions while generating powerful results. Here, I'll show you. We'll work in the key of C major, as we've been doing all this time, and we'll start with a C major chord. So all we have to do is write down the letter C. That's the root of the C major chord, and that letter all by itself will tell us that we're starting with that chord. If you want to consult your keyboard in addition to our rules for strong root movement, you can, but you only need it if you're still feeling shy about counting intervals. Now, instead of deciding to follow the C major chord with an F major chord or a G major chord or one of its substitutes, we continue our progression by using strong root movement. Let's follow it with this sequence of strong root movements. Up a fourth, then up a second, then up another fourth. We look at the keyboard to see where our root will move. From C, up a fourth is F. From F, up a second is G. From G, up a fourth is C. So there's our root movement, C, F, G, C. Now, you could build the chords in this very simple arrangement, but I'm going to make a different arrangement of their pieces. For now, never mind why, let's just say it's because I want to emphasize that from a simple line of root movement, you can generate lots and lots of chord patterns that conform to your blueprint, without having to move brick-like chords around in parallel patterns. Here's what it sounds like. Let's do a second one, making one that's a little longer. Again, we'll start with C. Up a second, up a fourth, down a third, up a second, down a third, up a fourth. That gives us C, D, G, E, F, D, G. Well, that might not be to your taste, but it's a solid foundation on which to work. So long as you keep the roots constant, you can change the arrangement of notes to please your own fancy. Notice how this freezes from the tyranny of mapping everything out with our primary chords, and then haphazardly trying to figure out where we can or should slot in a substitute chord. You might not know exactly what you're getting, but you're bound to get variety, and it will stand a very good chance of sounding good. Finally, we can use the concept of strong root movement to define one last term of art. We can use it to define dynamic harmony. A few videos ago, I described static harmony. That was where you keep returning to the same chord after each time you leave it. It's harmony that is in repose. It's not going anywhere. Dynamic harmony, in contrast, is restless, energetic, building with tension, developing. If static harmony is like a movie scene where everyone has stopped to catch their breath, dynamic harmony is like the action scene. Dynamic harmony gets a very simple definition. It is harmony that uses strong root movement. Unlike our earlier rules, it doesn't depend on using particular chords in a particular sequence. It depends on the way the chord roots move. The dynamism is in the way the chords change, not in which chords follow into which other chords. That's why we had to use relative terminology, intervals and roots, instead of chord names in order to describe it. So how do you use dynamic harmony? You use it in contrast with static harmony, and well-balanced pieces of music tend to use both. We use dynamic harmony to create motion, and then static harmony to give a breathing space. Then dynamic harmony returns with more development before static harmony puts us again into repose. Again, it's like in a movie, where scenes of quiet are interspersed with scenes of action. There are no rules about how long each period should be, either absolutely or relative to each other. But it's not hard to plot out blocks, and then to fill them in with particular chords. It's like in painting, where you sketch in the form, and afterward fill in the details. Generally, though, a piece of music begins with a period of static harmony, like stage setting or exposition in a story, before introducing the dynamic changes. It also usually goes out with a bang, ending with a sequence of dynamic harmony. So this gives us our last big rule for generating chord progressions. Alternate static harmony with dynamic harmony. I've got one last little technical point to make, just to tie off a loose end. We have some patterns that define strong harmony, but what about the opposite patterns? 
What if the root falls by a second, rises by a third, or falls by a fourth? Well, that's called weak root movement. There's nothing wrong with it, and you'll use it lots of times without even realizing that's what you're doing. In a passage of static harmony, for instance, you'll use weak movement half the time. So I don't have anything to say about it. I just mention it in case you notice that little hole.